she was married to a dad who was eight years older because her mom gave her to him. Uh, he was a drunk, an uh, abusive drunk, um, pretty rough. Uh, when I was born, he didn't want anything to do with me, and he hated me because he swore I wasn't his. So he started to abuse me as a baby. He's done a lot of things to me. Um, he would, wouldn't let my mom feed me. He put beer in my bottle because it was a cheap thing. Um, one time, like my worst memory, if I can actually physically remember, I was two, uh, standing in the kitchen with my diaper on with the yellow floors, and mom had the old school heating up the pot of water, put the bottle in it for me and I was crying and screaming because I was starving and he takes the pot he just I can remember the way he looks and he just was saying something and he took the pot of water boiling water and just threw it on me and I had scars and stuff all over my stomach and then he my mom wanted to take me to the hospital but he beat her and told her no um, and he'd lock us in a room he was <laughs> He was actually really nice to my older sister and my younger brother. He just threw something about me. Um, one time, I fell um, as a toddler on some cinder blocks. And like my lip all right here was hanging off because it gashed. And I have a big scar right here. You just can't really tell now, thankfully. Um, my mom tried to take me to the hospital to get it sewed up because it was literally hanging. Beat her again and said no. Eventually, when my brother was one, he's two years younger, she fled from him. Um, she finally got away. She said a nurse that helped her give birth to me um, helped her get away from Jimmy, my biological father. I mean, he hated me so bad. Him and my mom were not allowed to name me. I am. I took the name of that nurse, Judith Christine. I wasn't even allowed to be given a name. But that sucks. But my mom said it meant a lot to her because the woman helped her. And my mom had her own faults too. She was an alcoholic as well. Um, she met a man named Robert shortly after she left Jimbo. He was all right, but he was just like, I don't know. He was, he was just all right because <laughs> he, he didn't physically really hurt us too bad. Um, we were, we kind of just were that typical ghetto white trash family. Uh, we just were, we were very, very poor because my mom ended up having two more kids with this guy because she married him. She had five in total and we just moved around a lot. We lived really rough. Um, we were homeless a lot. We lived in cars. We lived in hotels. We lived in just empty houses. The worst part was we would like just literally be all over Texas. We were, well, I was born in Texas. All over Texas, Missouri, and Oklahoma. And I remember laying there as a kid in one of the rooms because we never had beds or furniture or anything. You just had a sheet or two for us all to share. And those. They have the biggest cockroaches in Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, they fly. <laughs> it's really freaky. And a lot of my memories are of those. Big time. I hate that. So we just, we live rough. Um, I have a bunch of funny stories about dumpster diving. That's how we got things. My mom was, my mom and stepdad were, you're criminals. They were drug dealers. They were drug addicts, alcoholics. They would steal anything and like my mom when she just drove by a house and saw something they wanted she'd go back later that night and grab it you know she's just that person um so that was that um school was rough i was always a new kid i got in fights a lot the only good thing was i lived so tough i just won them all <laughs> but it was still sucked to constantly get you know in fights it's just the way it is. I don't know why. We, we always lived in rough neighborhoods. Always. Um, and it was, it was hard to deal with as a, a little white girl.
because we got picked on and, and hit a lot. Um, we lived in Killeen, Texas a whole, whole lot. Uh, we lived in what you call the ghetto, and we have had, I have had guns pulled to my head as a kid. I've been shot at as a kid, just because the gangs were really bad down there. Um, in a park called Conover Park, I'll never forget that park. It was like the hangout for um, gay, I guess, gay members, because ironically next to the park was a strip club. I don't know, it's Texas. But, um, and that just became the normal for us. I didn't really think anything about it. It was just like, that was, I didn't know any different. We were never around anything different, um, per se. And I was kind of right with that. Um, life kind of went on. We just went around our daily life. We just continued to struggle um, just to eat, survive. I mean, I remember I was maybe eight or nine, and me and my brother and sister, what we did have, we were smart enough to, like, sell, have, like, these little yard sales. We would go by, like, where little old ladies would live and pretend we were doing yard sales. And because we were so hungry, we'd sell up our toys to go get food, but we ended up getting candy from the store. <laughs> but we were eating because my parents, they didn't really think about that. They were usually gone a lot, and they were gone every night. So that was their business hours. I don't know. Um, we have, <laughs> they weren't the nicest parents, or they weren't really nice at all. We, we got our butts tore up pretty good. They were just, my mom was usually drunk and angry. And she usually pinpointed me. Um, I always just figured it was because Jimbo made it up on her because he didn't like me and I was just, you know, it was me. Because really, she was always really nice to the rest of the kids. Um, but she was pretty rough on uh, get her and my stepdad to, to beat me a lot. Um, I don't know why this was. Um, so that was just how it was growing up. And then one day I was, I remember I was nine years old. And one day I woke up to um, my mom being gone with my youngest sister and my, I can't, I don't my dad or my stepdad was like, your mom ran off, I gotta go get her. Well, she met a guy and ran off in North Carolina. So she up and left. And we lived in like, I guess what you consider these little apartments are like two houses connected. Well, he told these people, I don't really know who they were, but I guess they were friends, to watch us, me and the rest of the siblings, while he ran after mom, who went to North Carolina. And these people weren't nice either. Like, people that they always hung out with were pretty bad people. Um, the men were perverts and usually I got dumped off a lot with like family members or these people I don't really even know who these people were I cannot remember but a lot of them were like guys with little kids and you know they were, they were perverts so they end up molesting me and the little girl most of the time I never told anyone because I knew my mom wouldn't care I kind of figured, how could you not know? And I kind of figured she set it in motion. How could you just dump your kid off these people that you just meet? I mean, I don't, so I just figured, whatever. Um, but, so those people, they didn't like us, the kids neither. They, um, we were supposed to stay in their house with them um, while Robert ran off, tried to get mom and Kira to come back. Um, they didn't let us in. They didn't um, like to feed us. I remember one day she had a big bowl of black beans and she said, here Jaws, food for the day, and slammed it on my table and she's like, hurry up and get out of my house. And we just left, me and my, it was me and my older sister who was a year older, my younger brother who's two years younger, the other two kids, um, my mom, and, they were with my mom and stepdad. Um, we pretty much slept in the park. Um, I do not know the time frame, how long they were gone, but I remember 
we didn't go to school, and I remember we were sleep living in the park, or sleeping there for however long they were gone. We would dig in the dumpsters for food, and some of the slide and eat what we could, because there was a lot of, you know, cookouts and stuff. Thankfully, they had leftovers, and I remember one of the scariest times was while they were gone, and we were at the park playing, there was a baseball field, and people played baseball, and this guy in his 50s, this white guy with white hair, and he was kind of skinny, he had a jean jacket on, and jean, like light blue jean pants, and he came over, and he was like, y'all look cold, do y'all want to come in, come to my house and get a coat, and I was like, no, and he's like, come on, y'all, just, um, y'all are too cold to be out here, it's Texas, it's not cold, uh, so, uh, I kind of got a really bad vibe, and uh, I was like, no, and then he reaches in and pulls out a gun. He's like, you're coming with me now. And I pretend like I didn't see it, and I was like, no, because my uncle's right there, and he'll kill us if we leave. He, he goes, you can, ask, you can ask him. I just made up, it was just some guy I'm playing baseball. And so I was like, uncle, uncle, and I started waving, and luckily one of the guys cared and he kind of figured out what was going on because I guess he saw the traumatic look on my face <laughs> and the baseball players were running towards us and they chased the guy off. Um, so I was really thankful that we were by the field when that guy came up to us. But uh, then eventually my mom and dad came back. My mom and stepdad came back and they knew we were always at the park. I guess what people told me we were, um, they knew. So they ran over to the park, got us, and said, come on, we gotta go somewhere. We got in this truck and just drove to North Carolina. And then we're here. And my mom is, I don't know, understand it, but my mom is, it's all of us living together with my mom, my stepdad, and then the guy she ended up leaving him for, or yeah, the guy she ran off with, I don't, I was like, I really don't understand. Um, we all lived together for like a year, uh, moved around a lot here, and then eventually after crazy things happened, mom and dad split, my mom's living with her new boyfriend, and but we still had shared time, we still lived with my stepdad because he was with my dad for all these years. Well, I guess once he didn't see us as his kids anymore, he started being perverts. Um, to me so that ended up being bad and but luckily eventually for some reason she stopped making us go over to his house anymore I don't know why because I never told her obviously I was scared and didn't I, I just really didn't think she cared you know as usual because um, she was still you know all she cared about was party my mom just wanted to party really really hard and that's all her money went to that um, anything she ever got was just for herself I mean she was a very selfish person and so we just kind of dealt with that well my mom having she, I don't even think she passed the eighth grade she has no education all she does is a waitress so we can't still live poor whatever money she did have went on beer weed pills and her tanny um, we lived in an abandoned school for a while, a little bit, because we couldn't afford to live anywhere else. Um, one day, like right after we, I don't know how, we didn't go to church. We, I didn't even know God was at all. I didn't know anything about church. Church to us was a place where we'd go, it was building and we beg for food there, or we get these food vouchers and go to the grocery store. Um, so I didn't know anything about what Christianity, God, or anything like that was. But for some reason, with her new boyfriend, we ended up at a church. Um, and the one of the ladies there took us shopping because she felt bad because we didn't have anything. And she took us school shopping, and I was like 11. And she had just bought me a brand new wardrobe, like pretty clothes. So then I had two pairs of pants and like three shirts, and the pants were high waters and the shirts were way too small. 
place to eat in the fall. So she bought us shotgun. That night, my brother, who's two years younger than me, ends up burning down the abandoned school that we live at. And it's like, how could things get worse? Now we're back to being homeless again. And my brand new wardrobe is gone. I finally had clothes. Um, and then when the police and firemen and all that come, and I'm like, and Jimmy did it. He was, he was like, Judy, I burnt mom's bed. And it's got matches and paper in his hand. It's like so typical. And I'm like, okay, this sucks. And then got out and called 911 um, from a neighbor or whatever. And, you know, I told them that. And I got in a lot of trouble because everyone said it was me. And I was like, and I'm fine, okay. So, but they're like, oh, he's too cute and little to do it. So I got in a lot of trouble with the police and the firemen and all those. Um, but we just went on from there. I guess started back from square one. Um, ended up living in just another trailer park. Um, and it was the same spiel. Um, I never saw my mom. She was always out partying. Um, and my stepdad, he just, or my, her new boyfriend, was he was five years younger, so he wasn't really interested in being daddy or raising kids. He was just a kid himself. He was like in his 20s, younger 20s. So he didn't know any better either. He, I, I guess he tried. But um, I started hanging out with my aunt, my mom's younger sister, because she lived up here. And she is not that, I was 12 and she was maybe 20, 21. And she was just as bad as my mom too, as far as that goes. And, um, but I started hanging out with her because she showed me attention. I mean, she wanted me to be with her, well, for the wrong reasons. But she'd buy me stuff. Well, I started going to her house, and she liked to party too. And then she let me party. <coughs> so I started drinking um, when I was 12 every weekend, because I'd stay at her house every weekend. And started smoking weed at the same time. Um, then I guess a, so a month or two passed, and her, her and her friends started giving me pills. And I loved it. I didn't feel scared. I didn't feel sad. I didn't. I felt like good and confident, and I, I liked. How I didn't feel anything negative. You know, I didn't because I hated my mom. I I honestly did not love her. I hated her with a passion. I felt nothing. She was just this lady I was stuck with that I could wish I could never see again. So. Um, Eventually, every uh, weekend turned into every day because I was sneaky and would take the pills and I learned how to, you know, do what you do to make a joint um, at 12 and I'd sneak it home and then I'd do it every day. Um, no one ever knew. I was that quiet goody two shoe kid. No school, no nothing. No one ever knew anything. And if I was at school, I'd pretend like I was in goody two shoes thing. Like, I didn't like people to know I did that. I didn't like people to know why I did that. So I just always played it off. Like I was just a shy kid who just didn't like to talk much. I just kept to myself mostly because I started to learn it wasn't normal what I was going through because then I was in middle school and you see other kids who are just like happy, normal, and they're going to movies and I didn't do that stuff. And I, you know, it was wasn't part of my lifestyle so I just kind of kept to myself and I would hang out with older kids that would hang out with my Aunt Tammy and that crowd who I was used to that I thought was normal and felt, could feel comfortable around um, so that was pretty much how I lived for a few years just a lot of drugs a lot of stupid things sometimes I don't know how I didn't end up worse because I would literally go to her house, there'd be people, just people, never met them before, and they go, oh, let's go to this party. And I'd get in the car and just go off wherever, and it was like an every weekend thing. It would just, just go, just go, just go, and just do as many drugs as you could, and then, back to, and I'd still go to school, go back to school, you know, and play it off. I really did not have anything to do with my mom then, and I, she didn't care. She didn't have anything to do with us. I mean, she was always, she was off 
on the other side of town partying herself. Um, we pretty much had to fend for ourselves. If there was food in the house, we had to cook our own self breakfast and lunch and dinner. Um, we had to clean everything ourselves. If we ever needed anything, we had to do it. There was no, there was no mom or parent to really do it. I mean, we were, we were like all roommates in that, in that trailer. But it's really odd um, to think about that now when I have kids. But um, I, th once again, I still didn't realize everything because you're just living your life. Well, I was 14 on October 17, 20, so 2001. These ladies and the cops are knocking at my door <clears throat> and they say, your mom's like somewhere, the hospital or something, I don't know. You gotta come stay with us for the weekend. Okay, whatever. Well, social services. <laughs> um, so just pack what you can. The girl didn't have anything. But you got to come with us. <clears throat> so we got in the car. The kid, all of us kids, we were at home. And then um, she, the lady Teresa, the social worker, was trying to explain everything to me, the car ride to wherever she was taking me. And she said, we're social services. We're taking you from your parents. Um, we've been trying for five years to get you guys taken away. Um, and we finally <clears throat> got a chance to. And I remember the feeling was like, yes. Like I remember just being like, I knew it was so wrong how they were living. And I knew I was like, I felt inside like, I could have a chance, you know? And I'm not put in all these circumstances because still a bunch of bad things were happening to me. And I was like, I can just finally be somewhere safe because I never had protection. I was never safe. I was never, you know, I don't know, it was just open and exposed to have your kids way too much. Um, so I'm like, all right, this is cool. And I, I mean, I was so excited, like my other sister was crying and I was like, shut up, what are you crying for? Like, are you serious? This is, this is a good thing. And I remember and telling her literally to shut up. We were at Pizza Hut and they, cause they fed us dinner. And we're like, oh, I get to eat so good. And I was so excited and so, um, she drove me to Summerfield. I never heard of that place. It was in the country, and she took me to this couple's house. And I was kind of scared because it was at night. We got there, it was like nine o'clock at night, and I was like, oh, wait a minute, let me make sure this is all right. Um, and they took us to different places. We weren't allowed to be placed together. We were older, and they knew we were, we were trouble. <laughs> so, um, but me, I went to this couple's house, uh, they're like, you're going to be here for now. They're, they're, you know, you're not getting adopted or anything. We're just going to figure out what to do with you because now we have you. It was just like all of a sudden thing. It just wasn't like, like we, it was just like quickly grab you out of the house and go kind of thing. Um, so I went there. Um, it was such a shock because they were like super Christian. Like super, like <laughs> she was a Christian, like soda was the devil's water. You know, she didn't believe in fast food, it was the devil. Um, she didn't believe in makeup, it was the devil. Like, it was just like super duper duper Christian. And it was, it was hard to get accustomed to that. And she had rules and guidelines, and that was different. And you ate these things called vegetables, which I call pilgrim food. <laughs> and I was like, where's the ramen noodles, man? Where's my bologna sandwiches? And she still laughs about that. But, um, but, you know, I just kind of went day by day there. But shortly after I was there, you had to, I had to respite with other families. So they would try me out with other families to see if they might want to adopt me because this couple was not interested. They wanted little kids. They already have kids of their own. I was 14 years old. They have, they have no interest in me. Um, and they told me that up front, you know, so I was like, okay. But I was like, this is so good. I'm in foster care. These people care. They're going to protect you. They're never, you know, everything bad is gone. Um, I will say I did not stop doing drugs, honestly. That was hard. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a really smart person. I walked in that school and could tell who had what pill, what drug, what everything. And I quickly befriended them. Um, my best friend was Brian. I, I'll never forget that. I was ninth grade and there. Um, and he, I just could tell he was the guy. So I still, um, I still
still need to peel. I did a lot of hard other stuff, um, way too much. I mean, I was like, I did cocaine like every weekend when I was living with my parents, my real parents. I um, did acid, drank anything and everything I possibly could. Um, and I mean, I really did because a lot of the time I would want to do so much. I'd like, maybe I won't wake up. I mean, I, I did get to that point. I would push myself and take a bunch of pills and drink a bunch of liquor with them and be like, because what's the point? You know, it wasn't a fun life. It was just, I lived and I did this stuff just to survive emotionally and physically everything. Um, <clears throat> so I still did, you know, did that stuff and I'd hang out with the friends where I could go to their house and drink because their moms were cool moms, you know, whatever. But of course, no one knew. As soon as I got to school, I was like, don't tell anyone, just got a little secret. I'm a big two shoe. Um, because I never liked to glorify that. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't fun why I did it. It was a serious reason why I did it for me. Um, but I started respiting with these families, and then I got discouraged again because just when I thought I was safe, you go to these people's houses, and the ladies are really mean for some reason, and the guys are all perverts again. And one time I was at this house and the guy was being a pervert and I was like, I'm gonna tell someone. So I told this other girl who was the foster kid at, um, somehow I guess she was there and she said, well, you can't say anything because the last girl ran away because he was molesting her and they told her she was being a problem child that he would never do that and she got in a lot of trouble. And she was a teenager too, so I was like, okay all right so just now I'm just in this back in the same thing again and I was too afraid of course to tell anybody because I didn't want to get in trouble or cause anything well I thought okay well I'm just not being appreciative or being in a little better situation and that's how I thought about it so I was like just suck it up and um, just ask never to go to that particular house um, even though you really didn't have a say in it <clears throat> but uh but the, um, I started getting close to the people I lived with. Their name was Marty and Elizabeth. Um, because I, after a year, I was still there. Even though they didn't want me, I was, I was still living with them, which is like, like kind of odd. And I was like, well, it's because, you know, no one wants to adopt a 14-year-old girl or 15 or whatever. But I started getting close with them, and I, because I really didn't talk to them, I literally just lived there, you know, and she was just like, this is the world. And I tried not to give them a hard time, the time I did, and, um, but, uh, so she started, of course she made us go to church. She made me be involved in everything in church. I couldn't stand church. It was boring. I was confused. I didn't understand anything, and I felt really stupid because everyone else knew everything, and I felt, I was like, what it, it was like literally foreign to me. Um, so after a while, I started paying attention. I was like, maybe you won't feel it. And it really does because I felt stupid because everybody grew up in church and I didn't know what it was. So I started paying attention in church just because I wanted to know stuff and not feel dumb. And then I would ask Elizabeth all these questions. And then, of course, she answered it, and she, like, loved that, you know, and she, you know, supported that and nourished me being interested in it. And she made me go on every youth retreat, everything. And what really got me is she um, always paid for me to go on youth retreats for, where the teenagers would go and they'd work on someone's house, clean something. They'd go on these trips and they would um, 